we're going to talk some fractions here. Anybody? 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 It's anybody. Anybody. Fractions. I'm sorry. Sometimes life just doesn't go the way you want it to. Fractions. Write down this set of directions here right out of the book. Uh, use prime factorization to reduce. Use prime. God bless. What's going on? Factorization to reduce. And the fraction you're supposed to reduce is third, 20 over 36. If you see this as your directions from the book, what do you suppose you need to do? Carter Westfall. Uh, no. If the directions say use prime factorization to reduce, Wade, you probably. Uh, most of the factors that are both in multiples. Yeah. 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 Step number one is you're going to have to prime factorize them. Now that doesn't mean I think you need to go to grade and length. Maybe you're getting good at this and you can do this in your head. If not, you're going to have to show it to me. What does 20 break down into? 2 times 10, and 10 breaks down into 2 times 5. So the prime factorization of 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. You're going to have to show that. The prime factorization of 36. 36 will do, uh, I don't know, we'll do division by primes. Why can't I use 6 as my dividing number? Brand? It's not a prime number. So you're going to want to use a 2, you get 18. Use a 2, you get 9. Use a 3, you get 3. So the prime factorization of 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Once you get it to that, how do you reduce it from there? Do you remember this from last year, Evelyn? You? Yeah, any same ones, one on top with one on bottom, can reduce. For example, this has a 2 on top, it crosses off with a 2 on the bottom. A second 2 on top with a second 2 on bottom. If they don't cross out, yeah, you keep them and you have to re-multiply if you need to. So this on top stays a 5, 3 times 3 on the bottom stays a 9. I know you can reduce this without doing that, but it asked you to do that, so you will oblige the book there. Ryan Connor, what happens if everything crosses off? What if I would have had a 5 on the top, and this 5 and that 5 would have crossed off, and I have nothing left on top? Um, you would put a 1 on Yes, one. you're always left with a 1. They don't always cross, I mean, there's, don't ever cross off, but there's nothing left. So that would be 1 ninth if that was the case. Perfect. Uh, and then what about this for fractions? <laughs> what if you have 3 over 4 equals what number over 20? Hyper warp speed, what do you do here? Parker? Sir? Oh. Oh. Dust the cobwebs out here. Well, how do I solve this, sir? Uh-oh. He's drawing a blank. Yeah. Uh, well, if you know what you multiply by with 4 to get 20, then Which would be what? 5. Yeah. If, whatever you multiply the bottom by or the top by to get the new number, that's what you have to multiply the other one by that number. 3 times 5, and then it's 15. Can anybody tell me why that works or why that is? You can't get 15 to write. Anybody, why does that work? Explain to me why that's true. Evelyn? Negatory, I don't think. Anybody? Why is 3 fourths the exact same thing as 15 twenties? Fake? Was 15 twenties the same as 3 fourths? Yeah, okay, but that still doesn't tell me why. I mean, uh, specifically. What did I just multiply 3 fourths by when I multiplied by a 5 over a 5? Because that's what I just did. I multiplied this by 5 and multiplied that by 5. 5 over 5 is what? 
for 1. What do you get when you multiply anything by 1? Oh, so since this equals 1, when I multiply 3 fourths by the same thing that is 1, I get the same thing. It just looks in different form. That is literally, figuratively, and most definitely amazing, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I agree. If you could do math all day long, don't you think you probably would? Yes. Oh, good. So, proper answer just before I give you the assignment. 